because the man sitting on one side of me is reading Jean Genet, and the woman on the other side is reading the New York Post with the headline, Attack of the Killer Tomato, because across from me, the row of ankles are all crossed, because a father says to his son, because you said so is why, because the doors shut then stutter open and five kids gangle in speaking Chinese, because a layer of orange tulle pokes out from the hem of a blue eyelet dress, because the New York Post at 96th Street becomes a man in a suit holding a basket of vegetables, because two blonde women ask a man in a hard hat if this is the uptown train, because a boy with a cello gets off at 68th Street and back on at 72nd, because Jean Genet becomes a girl with a French textbook, then a man with no book, and because a tranny gets on in red sandals with delicate straps and pink polished toes, because she leans to give the man with no book, paper, and pen, and the man with no book writes quickly, handing both back to her, because at the next stop she smiles and she waves her purple nails, because I get off the train at 168th Columbia Presbyterian Hospital, and before I show the security guard my ID, he asks, how's she doing? And I say, raring to get out of this joint. That's the right idea, he says, and I head up to the heart ICU, where I purel my hands, pull open the third curtain, and sit next to Nance on day seven of her induced coma, and say, just wait, sweetheart. Wait till you hear what's going on in this world. It's the bone of a question caught in your throat. Pre-dawn size of the day's first traffic. Shoulders like fists under your skin. Say it's raining this morning. You've just left a woman's blue musk and duvet to find devil knows what in the world. Your wet collar, too thin jacket, no match for pissed off sky gods. And say this car pulls near. Plastic bag for passenger side window, trading rain for music. Marvin Gaye. And maybe you know this song. How long since the man you called father troubled the hi-fi, smoldering Newport in hand, and ran this record under a needle? How long since the man's broken falsetto colored every hour indigo? Years since he drifted, dreaming into rice fields, stammered, cracked Viet Cong, gunboats and helicopters swirling in his head. Years since his own long walks, silent returns, and Marvin's many voices, his only salve. He came up harder than you know, your father. Didn't make it by the rules. Your father came up hard, didn't get to make no rules. Graying beard, calloused hands, fingernails thick as nickels. You were the boy who became that man without meaning to. And no, now. A man's life is never measured in beats, but beat downs. Not line breaks, just breaks. You hear Marvin fade down the avenue, and it caresses you like a brick. Your father, Marvin, and men like them have already moaned every book you will ever write. This you know, baby. This you know. It's not easy living here, waiting to be charmed by the first little scribble of green. Even in May, the crows want to own the place, and the heron, old bent thing, spend hours looking like graying bark, part of a dead trunk lying over opaque water. She strikes the pose so long, I begin to think she's determined to make herself into something ordinary. The small lakes continue their slide into bog and muck. Remember when they ran clear, an invisible spring renewing the water? But the ducks stay longer, amusing ruffle and chatter. I can be distracted. 
if I do catch her move, the heron appears to have no particular fear or hunger, her gaunt body hinged haphazardly, a few gears unlocking one wing, then another. More than a generation here and every year more drab. Once I called her Blue Heron, as in Great Blue, true to a book, part myth, part childhood's color. Older now, I see her plain, a mere surviving against a weedy bank with fox dens and the ruthless overhead patrol. Some blind clockwork keeps her going. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Cleopatra and Victoria and John. It was a wonderful evening of poetry.